Hi, I'm Tim Bound and I work here at Transtherm Cooling Industries. In this episode, I'd like to talk to you more about considerations for specifying adiabatic coolers, in particular, location. Location is really, really important for a number of reasons. The first being, we need to make sure that we are specifying the correct ambient conditions for the design of the cooler. So that would be dry bulb temperature and wet bulb temperature. Dry bulb temperature is really important for the specification of dry coolers because that is the cooling medium that's being dragged through the heat exchange coil to provide the cooling for the water. And that's the temperature that we see on weather reports every day. However, with adiabatic coolers, the wet bulb temperature is vitally important and it's what dictates the size of the equipment. The wet bulb temperature is the air temperature at 100% humidity. The reason this is so important is because we pre-cool the air typically to within about two degrees of the wet bulb temperature when we're designing an adiabatic cooler. So this is why the wet bulb dictates the size of the cooler. The dry bulb condition dictates how much water we're going to use. So if I give an example, we maybe have a 35 degrees dry bulb ambient outside in the height of summer. And in that area, we're typically gonna have somewhere around a 21 degrees C wet bulb. So we're gonna to look to pre-cool that 35 degrees C dry bulb temperature all the way down to roughly around 23 degrees. So the bigger the gap between the dry bulb and the wet bulb temperature, the larger amount of water we're going to have to consume. So the dry bulb's important to calculate that, the wet bulb's important to determine the size of the cooler that we need. So weather conditions are very important and we can help you out with that because we have a large library from over 8,000 weather stations around the world. So if you need any help determining what that is, please let us know. The second thing that's really, really important about site location is materials of construction. If we're putting a piece of equipment close to the coast, or maybe towards a corrosive atmosphere of one form or another, then we have to make sure that the build materials are the correct ones. Generally speaking, the marketplace requires that if we're further than a mile from the coast, we can use standard materials. So that's likely going to be copper tubes, aluminium fins, and galvanized casework. Then typically, if we're between 400 yards from the coast and a mile, we have a mild upgrade where we use an aluminium magnesium alloy fin, which has great protection in semi-coastal applications. However, if you get into the point where you're right on the coast, so you're within 400 yards, then we need to start looking at more serious upgrades. So we might be looking at copper fins and stainless steel fabrications. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to catch future videos, please make sure to subscribe. I'm Tim Bound from Transform Coffee Industries. Thanks.